Welcome everyone, I am Ta Custom, and today I'm going to do a very simple beginner level tutorial on how to sew bias tape onto fabric and also how to do clean mitered corners on your projects. Now for this demo, I'm going to be using my brother ST150 HDH, some half inch red bias tape, some regular uh, just woven quilt cotton fabric, uh, some measuring and cutting tools, and then I've got wonder clips and something to mark my fabric with. As an example of what I like to use bias tape for, this is a tunic, a part of a costume I made a few months ago, and I've got uh, bias tape as my accent running around the collar and all the way down the front, and I've got nice clean corners here on the bottom. There are tons of things that you can use bias tape for. A lot of people make placemats or table mats, uh, quilts, lots of other home projects. I like to use it for garments and costumes, uh, but it's very simple, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it using just some fabric and some half inch bias tape here. Now for this demo, I'm gonna show you how to bias tape all the way around this whole square of fabric and get nice clean corners and stitching all the way around. Now, if you're an absolute beginner to bias tape, I want to show you just a very small example of what this is and how it works. Now, I just cut off about two inches of bias tape and the way this works is it's just a piece of fabric that's folded and pressed down the middle and then it is folded and pressed on either side. So you end up with something that looks like this. And when it's all collapsed, it will sandwich kind of around a piece of fabric like this so that it's on both the front and the back. And then we're gonna end up top stitching over it to keep it locked in place and it's a great way to add accent and detail to your projects. Okay, now I've got about a three yard spool of bias tape here. And again, this is half inch bias tape. Um, so make sure you get the appropriate size for whatever project you're trying to make. But I'm just gonna leave this all as one long piece to start. To get started with actually putting bias tape onto your project, uh, you'll just need your fabric. I highly recommend using Wonder Clips or something like that. Pins don't work that well. Uh, and then I've got all of my bias tape here. So the way this works is we're gonna open this up all the way and do not press this open because we need those creases to stay there so that we can see them and it's gonna fold around properly. Now I've got my bias tape opened up this way and I'm gonna put the right edge of my bias tape alongside the right edge of my fabric. Right. Now I'm just gonna put a clip holding that together so that stays in place. And then I'm just going to make sure that these edges are flush with each other and I'm going to put another clip about four inches down. Okay, so now to start you should have something that looks like this. And the way this works is we're going to stitch right in the ditch of the first crease of this bias tape here. And I don't want to start right at the top, I want to start about two inches down. So I'm going to make a mark with chalk about right here. So this is where I'm gonna start, and then this is all gonna be loose, and then I will show you how this is gonna look on the machine. Okay, so I'm pulling my project up to my sewing machine, and I'm gonna start where this chalk mark is right here, and I'm going to line up my needle so that it is gonna go right into the ditch of that first crease of bias tape. And I'm gonna slowly lower the needle to make sure that it goes exactly in the center of that crease. Okay, so I'm gonna take out my first clip here. And most of the time, I just kind of hold the fabric with my hands because I can easily see that these are matched up and they're flush. So I'm gonna very slowly start my stitch and do a little bit of a back stitch. Now, we're just gonna sew all the way down until we get about a half inch or so from our corner. So if I lift up my bias tape, I can see the corner of our fabric is right here. What we want to do is stop about a half inch before that corner, and I'm going to make a mark right here, kind of on a diagonal line with chalk like that. Hopefully you can see that. Now, as you can see, our chalk line matches up perfectly with the corner of our fabric here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stitch up to where that chalk line starts, which is about right here. And we're going to lift our presser foot up and pivot. We're going to be sewing at a 45 degree angle from right here. And I'm going to sew on a diagonal line right off that corner. Do one back stitch and then just run all the way off. Now I'm going to pull my fabric out and trim the thread. 
All right, so now you should have something that looks like this. So if I look at the back side, I can see that those stitches we just did go right off the corner of the bottom of our yellow fabric right there. So that's exactly what we want. All right, so this next part of doing the corner is very easy, but I want to move my sewing machine out of the way so I can show you exactly how this is going to work. All right, so I've got my fabric and my bias tape nice and flat here. And again, don't press this because we need those creases. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our bias tape and we're going to fold it at a 45 degree angle so that it matches up with these stitches that we did here at the bottom. Okay, so it should look something like that. Now I'm going to take all of this extra bias tape and I'm going to flip it to the other side and we're going to line up this edge of the bias tape with the right edge of our fabric here. So it should look like that. And I'm going to try to smooth this out as best as I can. So this looks perfect. So I'm going to put a clip here just to hold that all together so that I don't have to hold it. And we're going to put another clip at the bottom. Now we should have something that looks like this. So underneath here, we've got our bias tape kind of folded at a 45 degree angle along those stitches we did. And then we just flip the bias tape over and made a nice square edge on this corner here. Now we get to jump back onto our sewing machine and the next part is really easy. Now I'm looking at our project the way that we started it. So we stitched down here and then we did our uh, diagonal stitch that way. So this is folded over. So now what we're gonna do is turn our project this way and I'm gonna lay everything really flat and I'm gonna take out my pins and just hold this with my fingers. So now all we need to do is just start a stitch right on this ditch right here and we're gonna just do a straight stitch all the way across. So once again, I'm gonna line up my needle. I'm gonna start with a little back stitch here and then we're just going to follow uh, the first crease of this bias tape all the way to the next corner. All right, so as I lift up my bias tape, again, we're at the next corner. You see the fabric under there. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna get one stitch closer, lift my foot, do a 45 degree pivot, stitch at a 45 degree angle right off the corner. And then we are gonna cut our thread. Okay, so we're at our second corner and obviously we're just gonna do the same thing all the way around. And when we get back to our starting point right here, I'll show you what to do when we get back to our starting place. All right, so I'm just finishing my last corner right here. And as I lift this up, we're gonna see that we're almost back to where we started. So let me pull this off the machine right here. So I'm gonna do a little back stitch just to hold that in place. All right, so here's our final corner that we just finished uh, that stitch on. And I'm gonna pull this clip out. And as I fold this bias tape back, you're gonna see that we started our project right here down at the bottom and we've got a couple inches of loose bias tape right there and that's going to help us to put these together. So what I want to do at the top of where we cut this bias tape is I'm going to mark this with chalk or a pen or something about half an inch from the top here. Now hopefully you can see that blue line that we just marked right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of the bias tape from the top and I'm gonna lay this flat right over the top of where we started. Now I can't really see through this fabric, so what I wanna do is I wanna draw a chalk line right here, exactly where the chalk line on the bottom one is. So I can kinda of see the edges right there. So I'm going to draw a chalk line right here, or you can do this with a pen. Uh, so now I've got a chalk line on top, right where the chalk line on the bottom is. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to add about a half inch seam allowance. So this is where we're going to cut off all the extra bias tape about half an inch below uh, what we're left with. Okay, so everything is laying nice and flat. We've got the top bias tape marked with chalk. We've got the bottom marked. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to 
put these two sides of bias tape together so that those edges are even and so that those chalk marks are even. And for this, I am going to put a clip here just to hold this in place and we're going to go back to the sewing machine and stitch right across those chalk lines. Now I'm just going to line this up with my sewing machine making sure that those edges are even and that uh, I'm going to sew this at about a half inch seam allowance right here. I will do a back stitch and that should be good just like that. All right, when we pull this off our sewing machine, when we lay this flat where we just did that seam there, if I pull this tight right here, corner to corner, this should all lay nice and flat and there shouldn't be any puckering or bubbling with the fabric. Um, if this is too loose here, uh, you can just take this in and stitch a little bit closer to make it a little bit tighter, uh, but this ended up lining up fine. Now what I'm going to do to reduce some of the bulk in this seam is trim this down to about a quarter, maybe even a an eighth of an inch right here along that seam that we just made. Now we're going to make this into an open seam so that it lays nice and flat and as I pull this fabric and pin it down we're going to be able to stitch across here and everything is going to line up perfectly. Now this is where we ended our stitch when we were doing our last corner so I'm going to start right where we left off and do a back stitch and then we are going to stitch in this first crease here and make sure that our edges of bias tape and fabric are still nice and flush. When I get to the seam, I wanna make sure that this stays pressed open so that we've got a nice flat seam there. And we're just gonna keep sewing right through that. And when we get to these stitches right here, that's where we started, I'm gonna do a back stitch right there. And now we are officially done stitching our bias tape into place. All right, now that our first round of stitching is done, we can actually start to kind of fold this the way that it's gonna go. And I'm gonna show you a close-up of how these corners are gonna look. Okay, so as we're looking at our front corner, all we're gonna do is just kind of unfold this fabric and press our yellow fabric towards the front. It should make a nice 45 degree angle pleat right here like it is. And as we flip this over, all I want to do is just kind of let my bias tape fold naturally the way that it wants to. And I'm going to put a clip right here. And then I'm just going to kind of let this run off to do a 45 degree angle. And then I'm going to fold the bias tape along the other side. Sorry if my fingers are blocking. And then you're going to end up with a nice 45 degree angle pleat on the back side, just like the front. So I'll put a clip there to hold that in place, and then I will continue to clip up the side here. Now we clip that back corner into place, and if we were to look at the front and just kind of peek under this clip, we can see that we've got a nice clean corner there as well. All right, this is perfect. So we've got everything nice and clean. Everything is clipped exactly the way we want. Now all we have to do is just a top stitch right on the inside of where our bias tape is all the way around and then we are done with our project. Uh, for my top stitch, I'm gonna use a Guterman Pure White uh, top stitch thread to go all the way around so that you can see the stitching a little bit better as we do this. Something I forgot to show off is this is how our seam looked uh, where we joined our bias tape together. So that is very subtle. We did a really good job with getting this nice and clean. Okay, so now we're ready to top stitch and I've got my white thread for my top thread and my bobbin thread is black just so I can tell the difference when we're done with this project and show this to you guys. Now to top stitch our bias tape into place, I'm gonna edge stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge of our red bias tape right here. And hopefully it's gonna go through both layers of bias tape and seal the whole thing together. Now I'm just gonna start my stitch and I'm doing a little bit longer of a stitch because it looks better for top stitching. All right, so now we're just gonna edge stitch all the way around all the straight edges as close as we can to the edge of our bias tape. And I'm gonna pull out my clips as I go along. And when we get to our corners, we're gonna pull out our clips as well. And I'm gonna stitch right up into that V until we are in the next area of where we're gonna lift our presser foot, pivot, Put the foot down, pull out our next clip, 
and then keep stitching along the next edge. Alright, so this was our last corner here, and I'm going to pull out my last clip, and as we get to where we started our stitch, I'm going to line our end stitch up right with our first stitch, do a little back stitch, and then we are going to cut our thread right there. Okay, so we are all set with the last of our stitches. Now I'm just going to clean up any loose threads, and then we're going to take a closer look and see how well we did here. Perfect, so looking close up, we can see our nice white top stitch on the front, and if I flip this over, you can clearly see our black bobbin thread caught all the way around that corner, so it looks perfect all the way around, and we've got nice clean corners. All right, you guys, so we're all finished with making whatever this is. I guess it's kind of like a handkerchief with bias tape, but it did a great job demonstrating how we can sew bias tape and get nice clean corners. And once again, for garment construction, this works really well on collars and other things like that. And these same principles apply on corners that are not perfectly 90 degrees also. So keep that in mind as you're planning your projects. I'm still really excited about using this Brother ST150 HDH. It is a heavy duty machine, but this thing can handle anything you throw at it. I cannot thank you guys enough for all of your support and enthusiasm for all of my sewing tutorials. If you have any more questions, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, you can visit my website at totcustom.com for lots of other sewing resources and tutorials. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you guys in the next video.